Sonia, I can tell you're in a good mood today. Yeah, I, I, we're talking masks, so um, I was quite pleased with this one, actually. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> one of the hardest things about wearing a mask is you can't really tell what mood people are in or how they're... It would be because you lose all the facial expressions, so I thought I'd solve it with my Lego-type mask. It's it's pretty freaky, actually. But if you become sad very quickly, it does mean... Yeah, I can, I can flip it over. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, this is my sort of red warning <laughs> sign, you know. Probably best uh, not to approach me at the moment. This is all because, at the moment, it's mandatory to wear masks in the UK on public transport. And as of next week, it's going to be mandatory to wear it in shops. But also, yeah. in general... It's a good thing to do anyway. Let's face it, these things are a pain. The best argument I heard today about people going on about it and infringing their rights and their, you know, freedom of, of, of speech and all the rest of it was, yeah, okay, go back to the Blitz in World War Two. You know, you didn't get your next door neighbour putting all their lights on and then going, oh, well, it's, it breaches my, my human rights to have the lights turned off. It's a community effort. And that's really why I wanted to make this video because we're, I've seen a lot of people not wearing masks or having reasons to not wear masks. And I've seen a rumour going around that wearing a mask reduces the amount of oxygen going into your lungs and things. And that's what we wanted to basically dispel the myth of that today. Let's try it out. So we've got a, a couple of different masks here. These are just ones fabric. So ones these are what I would call face coverings. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're things that you can buy on the internet, you can get your personality out there with them. Uh, they have, they make no uh, claims of being able to particularly filter out the particle size. Uh, but what they do is if you sneeze into them, then it catches your snot and stops it, you spread it, spreading it onto everyone else. And certainly obviously, because they're not single use, you have to wash them regularly. Oh yeah, you need to wash these every day, otherwise they're just gonna be snot factories. So shall we try doing our oxygen saturations yeah. Off. Off. And then on the different types of masks. So my sats at the moment are 97%. So my sats are between 97 and 98%, which is normal. <laughs> I think we're playing match the number. What's your one? So I've got 96 there with the same heart rate. And we'll try putting on the mask. Yeah. See, and, you know, we'd expect the sat to not to change not too change, much. not change, really, no. A few minutes later. So, my sats, so I've had it on for a minute or two, 98%. Yeah, it's gone up, see. See, there you go. See. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually gone up with this one. Okay, so what other masks do we have? If you're asked to go to a hospital, for example, you get provided with one of these. A lot of people are buying these at pharmacies and the high street stores are selling them. And this is just a, a surgical mask. Um, so it's the kind of thing that pre-COVID we'd wear this in operating theatres just to stop us from sneezing all over people. And this is what most of us doctors wear in the hospital and we have to wear them in all areas of the hospital and we can wear them all day and we kind of get used to them. In fact, I feel more comfortable wearing them now than not having one on, like, you know, when we yeah, come in. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't like wearing them to start with because one thing that they do do is they retain moisture. Mm. Uh, obviously, we breathe out water moisture in our breath. Um, so it, it can feel so the air that you breathe back in again feels warm, warmer than normal. And some people get a little claustrophobic with that feeling. It, it, it's, it's not doing you any harm or anything. So, okay, there's my sats now. So what are your sats now? 98. Very good. They've gone up as well. I'm on 96 now <laughs> since I turned them around. <laughs> yeah, it's just sitting about the same. And so moving on to that, what would be the next level of protection? This is probably things that people won't be using at home, but they may be familiar if they've done DIY and things, because these are the type yeah, of masks. these are the sort of things you can buy in B&Q. And we've got here a couple of examples of FFP3 masks. Now, an FFP3 mask um, has to filter out 99% of virus particles of around the size of the coronavirus. So the little gaps in here, the filter, um, is about the right size that it will stop this getting in, mm -hmm. okay? But just remember, if you go back to your carbon dioxide, for example, it's a lot smaller than a coronavirus and it can still get through. And these are do actually feel harder to breathe than the other one, because it's actually yeah. your breath is actually putting the, the air through the valves or through the pores, aren't they? Yeah, and you, you can definitely feel that. As you're wearing one of these, you, it, you, it, you're aware of the 
air coming in and out. Yeah. Um, but remember, the particle size for oxygen and for carbon dioxide is very small and it does pass freely. Mm. If you wear these for a long time, the water vapour builds up and saturates the mask. So you do have to change it after six hours or so, mm -hmm. um, because otherwise it, it, you will start to get resistance to, mm -hmm. to flow. But this is not the type of mask that you need to be wearing if you're, if you're going to um, Tesco. <laughs> um, but anyway, let's see what happens when I put this one on. This is the sort of thing that I would be relying on in the intensive care ward if I had to put someone on a breathing machine. Mm -hmm. If I had to actually get close, maybe within a few inches of their, their nose and mouth, and put breathing tubes down. So what, we don't like wearing these. And one of the reasons that we don't is because it can be a bit hard to communicate. Um, you can probably hear that my voice is a little bit muffled. Mm. So that's okay, because we have solutions. So mm. this is the same type of mask, but it's got a valve in it, which means that the air is filtered as it goes in, but then as it goes out, there's a little, a little flap valve you can breathe out more normally, so you can talk more normally, okay? Do not wear one of these when you go to Tesco because it does not protect other people from you. Yeah. If you sneeze, you will sneeze out all over people. That is not the point of, the, of wearing masks in Tesco. Should we see what happens to my sats? Yep, scores are in. So there's really no difference. 97, is it? So 97%. 97, that's exactly what it was before. <laughs> there you go. That's because oxygen is about 530 times smaller mm -hmm. than the coronavirus. <laughs> and the mask stops this big round thing getting in. It doesn't stop this little thing getting in. Last thing I want to talk about is that there's been some pretty controversial stuff I've seen about people targeting people without masks. So I think in America people have had guns pulled on them for not having masks. So there's people challenging people out in the community who aren't wearing masks. You don't like wearing one isn't a leg legitimate excuse but we've got a few things here that have been reasons put out by the government that you you know people might not be wearing a mask. Yeah I thought the most interesting one of those was the lip reading. Now, clearly, that if somebody is deaf and reliant on lip reading for communication, then it doesn't work very well. It'd be hard for anyone to lip read now. Hmm. So I could understand why it would be legitimate for people around the person with impaired hearing to not be wearing a mask. Please don't do this, okay? This is what you see everyone doing out and about, yeah? You know, you've got your mask on, you want to answer your mobile phone, so you just take it and do this. So you're walking around breathing normally with the mask on. As soon as you do something that might actually send the coronavirus a bit further, like talking or laughing, you take it off. No, that, that, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and I think also it's okay to challenge people who aren't wearing masks where they should do. And likewise, if you have a reason that you, you can't wear a mask, it's fine. Don't get upset if someone does challenge you. You know, they're kind of protecting you in terms of challenging people that should be wearing a mask. And I can imagine people, you know, for example, if they're claustrophobic or have other reasons why they shouldn't be wearing a mask, they might get annoyed with people judging them for not wearing it. Well, in which case you kind of have to get used to don't be offended if someone challenges you, because that's what I'm kind of seeing here is lots of people getting quite irate about that. And if you challenge someone, it's about doing it in the right way. There's no reason for anyone to get upset or offended. We're all just trying to protect each other. We've had a bit of a chat. We proved that oxygen levels do not change when you wear face covering or a mask. So we can put that one to bed. All right, guys, thanks again for watching the video. It, it, that is quite a freaky look, actually. Is it, I'm is not it sure if it's look? encouraging or freaky. Yeah. I mean, I don't think the monkey one was much better, but... No, I um, like to express my personality with masks. Fine. You know, this is a new way of expression. <laughs>